So in any fast-paced shooter like X Defiant, hitting your shots is arguably the most crucial element to winning games and performing well from game to game, but that can be a lot easier said than done. And so today I wanted to help run you guys through a few small changes and tips that might help you improve your accuracy in X Defiant. And keep in mind, this video is aimed specifically at controller players. Apologies for the sound of my voice. I'm a little bit under the weather at the moment, but the content grind must go on for you guys. There is plenty of content I want to get out on the channel, so there is no time to rest. Now I'm going to be starting this video with a few settings you should be changing to help improve your accuracy but stick around to the end of the video as well because I'm going to then give some tips while I'm actually in the firing range to show the tips I'm giving you guys in real time so you can see how it works rather than just cherry picking good footage from matches or something like that. Now anyway like I said we're going to start off with a few quick settings that are going to help you guys improve your accuracy and then I'll mostly go over the tips which are by far the most important element of this video but there are definitely a few settings that are going to help you guys out. Now the first one you may not actually expect but this is the field of view settings. Now I I've got mine turned to 120 and that is honestly what I recommend. You can kind of see it in the background as I change this. It essentially just zooms in and out for those who don't know how the field of view works. I believe it is set to 100 by default, but just to explain what I'm talking about, I'm gonna set it to 60 to show you the most extreme case of what I'm trying to explain. As you can see, this is very, very zoomed in. And if I just go ahead and shoot, you can see that the screen is jumping around quite a bit, especially right there when I let go of the trigger, it snaps all the way back and you can see how quickly that is snapping back as well as how far it's actually looking up. You can see the whole freaking screen is moving. Whereas if I go and change this to 120 that I play on, although the recoil itself is the exact same, you can see that the screen just isn't moving quite as much. It's not as big of a jump to go from there to there, even though that is the same distance as what was being shown in the 60 field of view. It's just that because it's zoomed out, it looks as though there is a lot less recoil. And so that is a big part of it, just the visual side of the recoil. Like I said, the actual bullets are all going in pretty much the same place. It's just that visually it looks a lot less. And that means it is a lot easier for you to pretty much just stay on target. Your screen isn't jumping around quite as much because when it is, it is very easy to lose enemies in your sights. So that is the first tip that I recommend to changing your field of view settings to 120. And that is going to help a little bit when it comes to the visual recoil. Now over in the controller tab though, we do have another one here called the aim response curve type. Now mine is set to reverse S curve. That doesn't necessarily mean this is the best for you guys. I want you guys to try it all three of these and see which one feels the best for you. It does explain them a little bit over there on the right. As you can see, this one says good for players who prioritize mobility. And that is exactly how I play. I'm a very aggressive player. So this one definitely suits me the most. And I've tested all of these out throughout all of the betas before the game even launched. And this one definitely feels the best. But again, that does not mean it is the best for you guys. So give them all a try. This will just help, I guess, change the way that the sticks feel a little bit. It's hard to explain, but once you get in here and try them all out, you will definitely be able to tell which one feels the the best for you. Don't just try it in the firing range. Go and play a few games with each one to see which one feels the best. And that is going to help a lot with your accuracy as well. Now, lastly, we have got the sensitivity. This one is obviously very basic. And at the end of the day, it is personal preference. There really is no such thing as like the best sensitivity setting. Now mine is set to 40. That's maybe a good starting place for you guys to try out and see if you like that. But just because mine is on 40, that does not mean it's the best. That's just what I personally prefer. Now, realistically speaking, the lower your sensitivity, technically that means the more accurate you're gonna be, but you're gonna obviously be a bit slower when it comes to turning around. This is a fast paced shooter. So if you're on a flag and someone's behind you, you're not gonna be able to turn around in time to kill them. And it's quite the opposite. If you set it to hundred, it is gonna be a little bit less accurate, technically speaking, but it also helps with those sort of flick movements. And so both of these do have pros and cons. Like I said, just try it out for yourself, but it is very, very important to make sure that your sensitivity feels good for you. If it's too high or too low, that will negatively impact your accuracy. So find something that feels good to you and then honestly just stick with it. Even if it's you know not perfect, it is better to just stick with something and get used to that rather than just constantly changing it every week. You'll then never get used to it and you'll kind of just always be suffering because of that. So those are the key settings you guys should be changing. Another optional one for me is I actually turn the controller vibration off. Now, again, this is personal preference. For me, it just feels as though I don't get distracted by the controller when I do this. A lot of times I'd be shooting someone and maybe a grenade would go off near me and it would cause a vibration and it kind of just threw me off just a little bit. I played with controller vibration on for like 10 years when I was playing shooters, but the last maybe four or five years I have turned it off and I do genuinely feel like it just leaves me getting less distracted when I'm in a gunfight. At the end of the day, when you are shooting someone, 
All you want to be focused on is just getting the kill. And if the vibration is throwing you off a little bit, that can actually negatively impact your accuracy. Now that is it for the settings, but I'm then going to go through a couple of tips for you guys, like I said, which are by far the most important element, because at the end of the day, the settings are very helpful, but you have to actually implement them in game. So the first tip that I've got for you guys in this video is essentially just how to do recoil management. Now, if you guys have been playing shooters for a long time, I'm sure you know how to do this. A lot of the stuff is basic. This whole video at the end of the day is basic, but keep in mind, not everyone has been playing shooters for as long as the rest of us. So giving you guys an example, I'm going to shoot without touching my right stick at all. I'm just going to show the natural recoil pattern of the ACR. This is what it looks like when I just hold down the trigger. As you can see, upwards and to the right, that is the recoil pattern for the ACR. And obviously every gun is slightly different, but from there you have a good example of what it looks like if you just hold down the trigger and don't do any sort of recoil management. Now to counter this, all I need to do is just slightly hold the stick down in this direction, which is obviously the opposite direction of where those bullets are going. And if I do that at the correct speed, you can negate almost all of that recoil and it will just kind of stay centered. So as you can see, as I'm pulling down on the stick, obviously it's not perfect, but that recoil is a lot less than it was earlier. And that is not just by chance. That is simply because I'm just holding the stick down. As you can see, the more I do it, the better I'm going to get at this. If you just sat here and practiced for ages, you could probably get it to be border on perfect. And as you can see, after a few times, it is becoming a lot easier to become more accurate with that so that's something i think a lot of the more casual or newer players don't tend to do that is just basic recoil management whichever way your weapon recoils if you just slightly pull down the stick to the other direction that will negate some of that recoil i'm going to shoot half of my clip while doing recoil management and then i'm actually going to stop shooting and show you guys the speed at which i'm pulling down so if i just do that recoil management that i was talking about and then stop shooting that's about the speed that i'm pulling my stick down and i'm just doing that while i'm shooting as you can see and we'll keep it in the same spot. So that is the number one tip for being more accurate. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be saying that is the most obvious thing I've ever seen. Again, keep in mind, not everyone is a veteran at shooters like a lot of us are. Now, the second tip is called rotational aim assist. Now, as you can see, I'm not touching my right stick at all here, as in moving it right to left. I'm literally only strafing. And as you can see, it is slightly grabbing on to this target here with the aim assist. So this is what's called rotational aim assist. And that means that if you're in a gunfight and you are strafing left to right, it is going to stay on target just a little bit more. And so if you actually put that into action and strafe while you're shooting, it is going to make you a hell of a lot more accurate because you're kind of getting the aim assist. Obviously you get a certain level of aim assist from the right stick. If I just keep this going in the same speed. So I'm not moving any quicker. As you'll see, this will slow down as it gets to each of these targets. That's how regular aim assist works. And it's very handy, but you also get the aim assist from strafing left to right. And so both of those at the same time, it's gonna make you a lot more accurate. And that's why you pretty much never wanna just stand still and shoot someone like that. You always wanna be moving, even if you don't feel like you need to, even if they can't see you. It's not just about being a harder target. Obviously that helps too makes you a harder target to hit for your enemies but honestly more importantly it is just keeping you a little bit more on target and that's something that i think a lot of players don't actually realize which is such a huge huge part of winning your gunfights now if we come over here and i'll just quickly show both of those at the same time it's obviously about implementing you know pulling down on your stick like i showed but also the rotational aim assist you want to implement both of those tips at the same time now i'll just shoot a few of these enemies without doing any of these as you can see I'm missing shots straight away. I'm landing a few, but then the recoil is just taking over and that is going to result in you pretty much just landing a few shots. But then as you can see, you're just going to miss after that. If I then do the strafe method that I just mentioned while also pulling down on the stick at the same time, you're going to see how much more accurate I can be while doing both of those things. As you can see, I'm pretty much barely missing shots because I'm strafing side to side and pulling down on the stick. And that means that we are kind of getting that extra aim assist while also countering the recoil. And you can clearly tell that that is a lot more accurate compared to what I was doing before. But I'm just standing still and after a couple of shots, they're all just missing and going over to the right. So like I said, that is a very basic look at how to improve your accuracy. Although it is basic, at the end of the day, recoil management and I guess accuracy as a whole is fairly damn basic. It is just about learning these little techniques while also just getting a lot of playtime in. And it does take a hell of a lot of practice. I've been playing shooters for 
I don't know, 15 plus years at this point, and even I'm still not even remotely close to being perfect when it comes to accuracy. But implementing these techniques and just getting in your practice, whether that's even coming into the firing range and doing this before you have a session, just to kind of get warmed up. It is all just about practice and yeah, implementing those couple of techniques as well as the few settings that I mentioned too. So hopefully that helps you guys out. If it did, be sure to subscribe for more content like this. There is so much more Exafiant content on the way. But with that being said, thank you all very much for watching. You guys have a great day and I'll see you all out there in the arena.